Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create a jack-o'-lantern using Photoshop. We started out with a standard pumpkin uh, with a transparent background. This way you can add in your own creative background that's going to make it interesting and unique. For our jack-o'-lantern, we're going to first initially make a duplicate of our original layer. You can right click over in the highlight gray area and duplicate layer. This way, if I do make any modifications, any changes, if I want to go back, I always have that original layer to work with. I can hide that layer for right now. But if you want to think about the original basic tools, starting from the top left side navigation, we have the move tool in which we can move the object around. Then we go into the basic shapes, we have the rectangular marquee tool or the elliptical marquee tool in which we can draw out a shape. If we want to hit basic shapes, we can simply hit backspace to cut out the area. I can always hit control Z or command Z depending on if you're on a PC or Mac. And deselect if I want to get rid of that dotted line or the ants marching line. But to really get a standard jack o' lantern shape, we can look at the basic tools such as the polygon and lasso tool. Polygon and lasso tool is located in the same location as the lasso tool. And with the polygon and lasso tool, we can get into drawing more of the triangular shapes. If we imagine with a standard uh, jack o' lantern going with a triangular shape for the eye, you can always look to cut out. And I can look to draw the opposite side, try to match it as well as possible. Simply hit backspace to cut that area out and give it a mini nose. Again, just following the triangular shapes. And again, just point by point clicking, whether I want to give it some square teeth. Maybe throw it on different levels, have it on the bottom or have a gap on the underneath, in between the teeth. It's up to you to how creative you like that would like to make them. So simply hitting backspace, get that standard looking jack o' lantern shape. Obviously, there's still lots of more to do on the interior, but very quickly we're able to simply draw out shapes and cut out the areas to create that face for our standard jack o' lantern. If we're looking to build out areas within the shape itself, fill out behind the jack o' lantern or make it appear as if it's glowing, we can first look to create a new layer over on the left side navigation. I go back over to my elliptical marquee tool and with the elliptical marquee tool I'm going to draw a circle or oval shape that appears over top of the entire face over the eyes, nose, and mouth. And if I want to give it that glowing effect I may want to consider using a gradient rather than the standard paint bucket. The standard paint bucket might fill it in with a color. Obviously I will move layer one underneath of my jack-o'-lantern to bring out that yellow but it could be very flat. So I may want to consider using a gradient. With this area still selected, I can switch over from the paint bucket to my gradient tool. Click and hold on the paint bucket, locate the gradient. I've already preset some colors, a yellow to orange color. I click OK. And then I can click and drag from the middle of the circle and click and drag outward. As you see, we have that more lit up effect creating the sense that the light is coming from the middle and then glowing outward where it's not necessarily going to be as strong or as bright. I can deselect to get rid of that line, but you see it did not go outside of the pumpkin because it was restrained with inside of the ants marching line. Again, you can look to fill in the other areas of the rest of the work. For right now, I may do want to do a placeholder in the background. So I can create a new layer and over again on the left side navigation, I may want to consider using the paint bucket just for right now, filling in with black just so I can see how it's going to work and how my glows might appear with the darker background. If I want to give it that spooky or creepy look. So above our gradient on the interior of our pumpkin, 
I would probably like to add a little bit of dimension going on inside of our pumpkin. You can zoom in, command plus sign for a Mac, control plus sign for a PC. And with the polygon lasso tool, I can use point by point clicking to help kind of draw out the areas in which I want to create dimension. So looking at the left side of the eye, interior, I may want to consider going back to my gradient tool. With my gradient tool, I'm currently using a radial, a radial gradient. I may want to switch to linear. Even using the same colors, depending on how you place it, you can see how yellow will hit the object. Or if I want to switch it, I can get more of a yellow into orange color, creating the sense that the glow is affecting on the inside of our pumpkin. Again, I can go back to the polygon lasso tool, click point by point. I'm not necessarily going or cutting it short, I'm giving the angle because I'm trying to make sense that dimensionally we wouldn't be able to see this right side. If I accidentally mess up, I can always hit delete or backspace to step back on my selected area. And then again, just repeating the same process using the gradient tool. Again, I would recommend you make sure to put it on a separate layer. I didn't originally do a selected layer for or a separate layer for this gradient over on the side, but I can continue on making sure that I do it from now on. So if I want to shorten it, I may want to go with the angle to try making the orange appear on the bottom portion and then having more yellow on the top. And deselect again. And again on the interior, just creating a little bit of dimension with my gradient tool on the inside. With the gradient, I can redraw a few times just to try making it as perfect as I want. And if you are not satisfied with it, you may want to darken up some areas. You may want to go back and redo some areas. Some short, quick tools, maybe to add in a little bit of texture, a little bit of depth within the work. I can go over to my burn tool on the left side navigation. With my burn tool, I'm going to change my range to mid-tones because I'm working with more yellows and oranges. It's going to affect more of the oranges because orange is more of a mid-tone where yellow is more of a uh, as a highlight. But if I click and drag over areas, I can darken up some areas if I f feel the need. If you're not really seeing any effects, you can try changing the midtones to highlights and see how that's going to affect it. And then we do get that more shattered effect. So if I'm not satisfied with how that's coming across, I may want to consider going back to midtones and pushing my exposure up. Again, I don't necessarily like how the green, the darker arrow is creating more of a greenish tone. So I may want to consider going back over my midtones. Again, just adjusting my exposure. If I'm not necessarily getting the result I expected, I can always go back. But again, we're trying to create that depth overall. So I can use the polygon lasso tool and create out that section in which I want to create color. So down here, it's just the bottom of the nose. 
because the higher ends of the nose, I wouldn't necessarily be able to see the sidewalls. Again, I can use the gradient tool, click and drag to create out that separation. I want to separate a little bit more just to get better separation from the original glow. We're starting to see dimension overall in the design. But again, take your time as you go through the design, building out the dimension. You're going to hit delete, undo. You then want to think about the bottom portion, making sure that does connect. Again, back to the gradient tool. Just redraw, redraw it till you're satisfied. Again, back to the polygon lasso tool, click point by point. And back to my gradient, just to add in that, again, glowing effect. So as we look at the design, we are making progress, but if you wanted to skip ahead or look into elements of where we can add in glows and glowing effects, I'm gonna create a new layer with the new layer. Again, I'm gonna draw around the area in which I've created. And I cut out, and I'm going to look this, fill this in. I can use the paint bucket tool, and I can use the eyedropper to match out some of the yellow color that I originally had in the design. But again, this is going to be a glow effect on the eye. So I'm going to rename it just so I can identify it easier. And then I filled it in. I'm going to deselect. It's important that you deselect so we don't have the constraint. But even though we are seeing it hide the original pieces or the pieces that we've used to create dimension, we're going to go back up to filter, down to blur, down to Gaussian blur. With Gaussian blur, I'm going to simply look to modify this out. And we're not seeing any type of glow or any effect because we actually want to move it above our jack-o'-lantern. Now that I have it above the jack-o'-lantern, I can move back into the filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you can see as I push, I push up that radius, I'm able to get a glow effect around the eye. You don't want to push it too far or else you won't be able to see it. But we're looking just for that glow that's going to make it stand out a little bit more. And what might help to create a little bit more dimension is adding effects onto the actual jack o -lantern. Again, if I want to create a little bit more dimension or a little bit more creepiness or horror, just to make it a little bit more spooky, I'm going to duplicate my jack o -lantern image that I created. I can hide that for right now. With this copy, I can look to play with the settings. To make it not necessarily so bright, but a little bit darker overall. I can go image at the top navigation, adjustments, and I can first attempt my brightness and contrast. With my brightness and contrast, obviously if I move brightness up, you get a brighter image, but we can lower down and also get more of a spooky night type of image. With the contrast, we still want to pull that orange color overall. But there's different effects that we can look at. We have the adjustments, we can go into hue and saturation, or throwing a photo filter, or I can look to play with the exposure itself. Playing with the exposure, we can make it darker. And as I get darker with the image overall, we can start to see that glow a little bit stronger over the eye. Again, we don't want to go too dark because the whole idea is that we can really see this jack liner stand out.
But it's really, again, for you to experiment. See what you create. See what happens when you start to play with different colors and different effects. I can also play with my image adjustments, hue and saturation. If I want to get into modifying my hue, I can go with a little bit different color. Yes, you can definitely experiment, see what you can create. Again, I'm going to probably bring this a little bit back to orange for myself, but again, for you, experiment how you wish. If I want more dull, I can go more a gray tone, just so that yellow pops out. Or again, we can get into modifying the lightness and how that orange is being affected when we take away that light. We also look to modifying the actual jack lantern, maybe using the burn tool on the exterior of the actual jack lantern. So if I change the midtones, I'm going to make my brush larger, hitting the right bracket next to the P key. You can go left bracket makes it smaller, right bracket makes it bigger. But I have a very soft brush. I want to make sure my hardness is down. This way, when I go over the sides, we can start to add in those shadows around the outside so that the dimension is really drawn towards the middle of the area. The focal point, looking at the smile, looking at those glowing effects happen, we're drawing our attention to the main subject. But again, now that we can see this a little bit better, I go back into adding a little bit more glow effects. I'm going to create a new layer. Again, go over top of the area of the eye that I want to draw it out. I can use my paint bucket to fill in this area. Deselect, and then back up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Again, you see that glow effect happen around the eye. I can always tweak, maybe pull it in a little bit. Maybe if I want to give it a little bit softer glow overall. I can play with other effects. I want to get into making the interior where it's starting to come into effect a little bit darker as well. We drop down the brightness. See how it affects it makes it more orange on the interior, helps the glow stand out a little bit. But think about different elements you incorporate. Again, we don't necessarily want to leave just a standard flat image overall. Think about the background, help make the composition. I originally had an image from another Subject, I can click and drag it back over to this one just for something a little bit more creepy. Again, make sure you maintain your layers. This should still be below all the features of the pumpkin. Maybe again, making this a little bit darker. I can use the blend modes that we have over on the right side navigation. See how it blends in with the black background. We're simply just dropping opacity just to give it that darker feel. But again, if I'm looking to create those different effects, I can select, say, inside the mouth. I have that area selected. Now I create a new layer, use the paint bucket, to fill in the space. And then again, make sure to deselect, control D, then back up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. I get that glow effect around the mouth. I never really added in that dimension. So if I want to add in that dimension, I could also look to create a new layer. 
I'm going to select on my jack o' lantern copy. Use the magic wand to select inside the mouth so it's an easy, quick selection. And if I want to cut areas out that I don't want to necessarily fill in, I can use the polygon lasso tool. This time I'm going to hold down Option or Alt on the PC, but I can cut out the areas that I don't want to get rid of. So this way, if I want to create the sense that it is again more three dimensional, going around parts of the mouth, I think will help create that more dimensional area. And because I'm holding down Alt or Option, when I get back to where I started, it cuts out the area that I don't want filled. So again, I created that new layer, layer six. I'm gonna sit underneath of my jack lantern copy and use the gradient tool to fill in the space. I'll go with a darker orange just so we see it stand out. Maybe I'll make this a little bit darker. But again, it helps to create that dimension. I'm creating a jack liner I might be happy with. But it's really a matter of how creative you want to be. Whether you want to make something creepy, more spooky, I go back in, hide layers that I don't necessarily plan to use. Maybe just start over again, going through the process. I can hide out all the rest of my layers, reveal my original pumpkin. I'm going to duplicate it just so if I mess up, I can always go back to it. But with this visible, I can start over. Maybe you want to use the pen tool because you're more comfortable with the pen tool. With the pen tool, I'm going to make sure that I've set my pen to path, not shape. With the pen tool, I can click a point, click and drag to create a curve. Maybe I want to give it more creepy eyes. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option to end my anchor that I can create a new straight line. And then again, click and drag to create that curve that I'm looking for for the right side eye. Once I have this area selected, I may want to click on selection. This will turn it into the ants marching lines. Just click okay. And I can either look to simply cut out or you can get into using layer mask. I wanted to make a layer mask out of this. I may want to invert my selection. Select in, select by holding down Command Shift I or Control Shift I on the PC. Now, when I do the layer mask, it cuts out the area of the eye that I want to help start to build out. But again, it's just a matter of following those same processes. So, if I want to give it a sinister eyebrow. And click on selection because I'm on this layer mask and simply hit backspace I can look to build out the other side Again, remember just hit selection at the top navigation cut it out you can draw these out however you wish down alt or option click a point click and drag to create your curve get alt or option then you can connect back where you began selection and backspace so no matter what you do it's just a matter of experimenting use the tools you know that you're comfortable with to build out the design that you would like the best. So again, if I want just something a little bit more traditional, 
and get that glowing effect. We're looking to see how creative you can be. Good luck and hope you enjoy this tutorial.